All right, well, welcome everyone again. My name is Duran Reyes, um, your UNT admissions counselor. Um, we are here at UNT Virtual Preview with the College of Information, and we have Rachel Paul, Assistant Director of Academic Advising for the College of Information. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you, Rachel. Thank you, Drew Ann. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We're really excited that you're here with us today, and we're, we're looking forward to sharing some information about the College of Information with you and about the programs that we have to offer. We have some of our wonderful faculty that have been joining that are joining us today and we're going to hear from them um, and take questions as time allows so we're going to go ahead and kick off i'm going to share my screen here and we're going to go through a presentation about unc and the college of information and the degree programs that we offer within our college so here we go um welcome again we're really excited that you joined us today on your saturday morning and um, we want to tell you about the University of North Texas and the programs that we offer um, within the College of Information. So um, UNT is one of the larger universities in Texas. We have about 40,000 plus students within the university. Some of those are attending on campus and some of them are attending remotely. Um, we have 109 bachelor's degree programs options and we're comprised of about 14 different colleges and schools. Um, and so we have comprehensive support for both academic and student services. Because we are such a large university, we have a plenty of resources to support you in your educational experience here at UNT. Um, so university versus college. Um, this is something that I think some, some students don't realize is just how large a university is and the different components that make up a university. So within the university, there are these different colleges and we're the College of Information, we're here. Um, and, but there are other colleges that make up the university. And so if you wanted to minor in something and that minor is under a different college, then um, that would be an option. So we can talk about that a little later. Um, so again, another thing that students may not understand about a university and attending you know within a college is that a college is made up of departments and so within our college we have three departments we have the information science department which has degree programs learning technologies which has degree programs and then linguistics which also has its own degree programs and so that's kind of the the organizational structure of um unt and like the breakdown of the units within the university uh, our dean is over the College of Information. His name is Dr. Ken Schick, and he has a learning technologies background, but he's been really, really great about supporting all of the departments within the college. And um, this is his contact information, his resource, uh, research interests. And um, I know he would love to, to chat with you if you have any questions about the college or, um, or your program or anything within uh, the college. He would love to he loves engaging with students, so feel free to contact him um, and he will, will support you however he can. Um, we have our advising team that supports our undergraduate program. So there's me, the assistant director of advising, uh, and then we have Sarah Kim and Blanca Hull. Um, Blanca is here. I think Sarah is also um, attending, but I'm not sure if she's able to, to speak, but um, Blanca, if you want to say a few words the students? Sure. We're excited to have everybody here this morning. Um, we know it's early and it's a Saturday, but this definitely shows that you're committed to your educational goals and we're very excited about that. Um, I have uh, actually been in education for 16 years. I was in public school um, and then I've been in higher education for nine years. I uh, really enjoy um, seeing come in and uh, being able to complete uh, what it is they set forth and it's just extremely rewarding. So um, the advising team is here to help you, to guide you and direct you and um, just to lend a, an ear whenever you just need to vent or you have any issues, just uh, feel free to contact us. And uh, our contact information, I believe, will be at the end of the PowerPoint. We're glad to have you. Yeah. And I think, Sarah, if you're um, able to unmute and, and say hello, um, we'd also like to hear from you. I, I don't know if she'll be able to, uh, to do this, but 
Um, Sarah advises students last name A through K, and so um, she would also like to say hello and, and greet you, but um, I don't know that that's possible right now, but we're going to go ahead and go for it, and then if, if at the end, if we have questions and Sarah can address them, then we'll go forward with that. Um, okay, so the College of Information, I kind of gave you the breakdown of um, of how our, we're structured. This is our website, ci.unc.edu. Um, you'll find lots of helpful information on our website. Again, it's just ci.unc.edu. Um, and you can get to the department website from the college website if you if you need to, to get to some department specific information. Um, we are not located on the main UNC campus. You may wonder what this picture is. This is UNC Discovery Park. It is about four and a half miles north of the main UNC campus. And so um, we have um, a, a separate building and it's kind of its own industrial kind of looking complex, but it's, it's a really neat building. And um, we would love to see you if you're able to come by and visit, um, especially maybe when COVID calms down a little bit. Um, okay, so we have four degree programs within the college. We have a major in linguistics, information science, data science, and learning technologies. And we do have information about these programs on our website. So if you don't remember something about the presentation today, or if you want to go and look at it again, you can find this information on either the college website or the department website, or by reaching out to us in the advising office. All right, we're gonna start with the Bachelor's of Arts in Linguistics. Um, we're going to do a brief rundown of the degree program and its requirements, and then we're going to hear from Katie Crowder, who is the linguistics faculty advisor. Um, so it's a VA in linguistics, and uh, it's comprised of a few different components. Um, each bachelor's degree here at UNC is 120 credit hours, and you have 42 hours of university core. This is like your general education or your basic courses that everyone completing a, a bachelor's degree has to have. So you have English, math, science, government, US history, of course, for the social and behavioral sciences area, and then these component areas that are listed at the bottom. Um, and for the component areas, you can take additional linguistics courses that kind of work with your, with your major. You also are required to complete a foreign language as part of the degree requirement because um, you know, learning language is pretty essential uh, with, and it's a good fit with the field of linguistics. Um, so you're required to do at least level four of a foreign language. If you already know another language, you can test out of this requirement sometimes. Um, so it would just depend and we could talk about that further in an actual, you know, advising session should you decide to pursue the degree program. Um, and then there are elective courses that you can take towards the degree as well. So you could minor in a language if you wanted to, or do maybe a double major in another subject if you want, um, because of the amount of electives that you have in this program. And then you have your major courses that you usually get started taking um, you know, later on in your degree after you've done some of your core courses, or you, you may be able to take some of your early linguistics courses alongside core courses, but the majority of your, your linguistics major courses may be done in like your junior or senior year, but um, that can be mapped out with an advisor as well. Uh, let's see here. These are some different career possibilities that are options to you um, within the linguistics field. You can teach a foreign language or maybe even teach English as a second language or a foreign language abroad. Um, working as a translator or an interpreter if you're fluent in another language, working for the US government, and then computational linguistics. That's, that's a, another area where there's a lot of um, growth and interest right now. Uh, so we have a student association and these are really great um, for our students to get connected with other students with you know, common interests and to maybe talk about research or to engage with their faculty and just do some professional development while they're still a student here at UNT. So um, getting plugged into the student association is a really, really great idea. Um, and I, I really strongly encourage it of all students to get connected to some sort of student organization. Um, 
whether or not it's related to your major. There are fun ones out there too, but this one is specifically geared towards linguistics. So now I'm gonna give it over to Katie and uh, she's gonna share a little bit about her field. I can stop sharing for now and uh, let her tell us more about linguistics. Hey, hi. Um, I, can't, I can't see any anyone right now. Oh, wait. Okay, sorry. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Katie Crowder. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I'm a principal lecturer in the Department of Linguistics, and I want to welcome you to our department and our college and to UNT. I'm the undergraduate faculty advisor, as Rachel said, uh, and I'm also the faculty advisor for our student organization that you just heard about. It's SLANT, uh, the Student Linguistic Association of North Texas. Uh, we hold weekly meetings and workshops on all things linguistics, and I pair undergrads and grad students in the mentor mentee program. I want to introduce you to the study of linguistics. I mean, you're you're interested in it already, so uh, I think you probably know some about linguistics. Uh, but I want to give you a preview. Uh, linguistics as a pro I'm going to talk about uh, the study linguistics as a profession and our department's mission and vision, and finally some of the courses that you'll take. Um, so to start, linguistics is the scientific study of language. Linguists apply the scientific method to conduct formal studies of speech sounds, grammatical structures, and meaning across the world's 6,000 plus languages. Because language overlays everything, because we all have access to it, we don't always see it in all its complexity. In fact, we tend to take it for granted. Uh, whether it's telling a story, creating a nickname, using voice recognition software, or helping a relative who's had a brain injury, you'll find the study of language reflected in almost everything you do. When you study linguistics at any level, you learn about one of the most fundamental parts of being human, the ability to communicate through language. You can study every aspect of language from functional theory to language acquisition and computational linguistics to psycholinguistics. Uh, studying linguistics enables you to understand how language works and how it's used, developed, and preserved over time. The science of language encompasses more than sounds, grammar, and meaning. When you study linguistics, you are at the crossroads of every discipline. Some of the skills that you'll gain in this degree, uh, data management and database structure, uh, analyzing and annotating language data, project planning and implementation, analytic capabilities, building corpora, which are bodies of language, computational analysis of language corpora, uh, just talk briefly, I'd like to talk briefly about linguistics as a profession. It's something that uh, parents are especially interested in, and I understand that. An undergraduate or advanced degree in linguistics can prepare you for a variety, a uh, career in a variety of different fields, uh, including but not limited to teaching, publishing, national security, international affairs, policy, forensics, medicine, and technology. Um, all right, I'd like to talk a little bit about our vision. Uh, the Department of Linguistics, in close collaboration with Library Information Science, Learning Technologies, and Computer Science, offers a collaborative environment for developing innovative curricula that incorporate research on language with database design and management, text mining, as the fields of TESOL and language data archiving, preservation, and dissemination. The international partners will include Mexico, India, Pakistan, and China. Some options for courses you can take as you get started in linguistics. Uh, so you can actually start taking some lower level linguistics courses as you start uh, your academic career. Uh, you can take a sophomore level course called the Language of Now. Uh, you can take another sophomore level course, Language and Computers. Uh, language and Discrimination is a great course. Uh, forensic Linguistics is a junior level course but doesn't have a pre prerequisite. And the Politics of Language. So you don't have to wait to start taking linguistics classes. There are plenty of classes you can take as you get started. You'll also, uh, you'll be required to take Intro to Linguistics, will, which will prepare you for your upper level courses, uh, courses like phonetics and phonology, syntax, discourse analysis, computational linguistics. Those will be your upper level courses. And of course, you'll have required courses and uh, uh, choices of elective courses as well. Um, 
am wrapping up. I look forward to meeting all of you in the near future, uh, possibly in the language of now, of course, that I designed and teach. And I want to uh, once again welcome you to UNT, the College of Information and the Department of Linguistics. I'm so glad you're here. Yay, thank you, Katie. Thank you. Um, I, I love hearing about our actual, like from our actual faculty. It's just so wonderful to hear y'all speak and talk about your passion and your profession. So thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you, Rachel. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk now um, a bit about the information science bachelor's degree program. So I'm going to share my presentation again. So here we are, bachelor's of science, information science. Um, we're going to see the degree program um, is uh, has the same shared 42 hours of core, um, and you're going to find that across the board at UNT. Certain majors, though, I will say stipulate what courses you take for specific core areas. Um, as far as I know, many of our majors don't do that with the exception of data science. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so English, math, science, government, history, same, same kind of thing. You need 42 hours of that, which is 14 courses. Um, and you'll take those usually toward the beginning of your degree. Um, and this major is a good fit for students who love to organize, can think analytically, they're computer savvy. Um, and this major also has quite a bit of room for electives, so you can also consider minoring in something else if you have another interest. You can take uh, courses for a minor in this cross-functional elective area, uh, and so you'll do 45 hours of cross-functional electives, and um, at least three of those 15 courses do need to be upper level because that's another degree requirement of bachelor's degrees is most of them require at least 42 hours of junior or senior level coursework. Um, and then we have the major courses, which you'll take in information science. So you would take five info courses that you map out with your advisor. And then you have six courses in a concentration that you'll select. And I have another page that shows our concentrations. We offer concentrations under the information science major in the following areas. And they're they're meant to be read up and down. So we have information science and knowledge organization, project and knowledge management, information management and health informatics, digital content and information systems, human language technology, which is a really great collaboration with the linguistics department. So students can take courses from linguistics as part of their information science bachelor's degree if they'd like to. And then we have data science. Um, these First four can be done online. Um, for the human language technology and data science options, some of the courses will meet on campus. So you would just need to discuss that further with your advisor, like which one would be the best option for you to select as part of the information science bachelor's degree. Within the, the program or outside of the program, once you graduate, the possible careers that you could pursue are in um, information architecture and information analyst, project manager, competitive intelligence, possibly health sciences, information management, um, information. <clears throat> okay, and then we're gonna go to Dr. Wong. She is the um, information science faculty that is the advisor for the undergraduate program. So I'm gonna give her a few minutes to share um, about information science. Oh, Dr. Wong, you're still muted. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Sorry about this. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Rachel, for your introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Xin Wang. Uh, I joined the UNT since uh, 2013, and uh, this is uh, almost uh, the eighth year uh, uh, for, for me to work for this department. And recently, I was appointed as the program director for our bachelor degree. Uh, so uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce our degree program uh, today. And uh, first, uh, I'd like to mention about uh, myself. Uh, I teach, my teaching area focus on uh, the core course information and the knowledge professions and also user experience. And uh, for my research interest, I have in, uh, interest in health informatics and the data analytics. Uh, so. Uh, for our bachelor degree, uh, first uh, let me introduce the, this discipline. 
Uh, information science is a relatively young discipline, and we started, uh, actually, it's become a formal discipline since 1960s, even though this domain uh, we rooted in 19th century. Uh, so this is an uh, interdisciplinary domain, and uh, uh, we c uh, care about uh, how information is created, managed, and uh, uh, how to organize information, and how people use and also share infor with information with all formats. Uh, so uh, originally, uh, we have three areas for this discipline. Uh, it includes library science, information science, and uh, also communication. So our discipline will lie in the interaction of the three areas. And the, the characteristics of our discipline is that we focus on user. Uh, that's why uh, since 1980s, we do have a paradigm shift. Uh, we, before we were system oriented, but now we are user focused. Uh, so, and uh, for our master level students, after they graduate, uh, they work in different uh, professions. For instance, they can work for different types of libraries. Uh, bench, uh, I, I mean, academic, academic library and uh, school libraries and the different uh, information centers and uh, being a knowledge specialist. And uh, these are some traditional uh, professions. For some non-traditional professions, our graduate students also can work uh, as uh, user experience specialist, information architect, and a data analyst, uh, business analyst. So for bachelor degree, I believe after you finish your degree, um, many of you, you would also like to attend a graduate school. That's why I, I like to mention these different uh, career paths. Uh, so you can have a long-term plan. Uh, and uh, so based on uh, bestcollege.com ranking, our bachelor degree was ranked 16 uh, in previous years. And uh, we <clears throat> already have a full spectrum of courses available for you. For instance, you can take information uh, system design, uh, in information retrieval course, and also uh, for myself, I'm teaching uh, information architecture and also user experience metrics. And we have data, uh, data visualization courses available. Uh, so uh, that's why this is a very promising area. And uh, I encourage everyone to uh, take a close look at our web page. We have very detailed uh, uh, introduction about uh, the discipline and uh, the Career, career goals and all sorts of support from our department. Thank yeah. you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Thank you for being here and for sharing with us about information science. Um, we do have a, you know, a pretty strong department um, with information science and we have quite a few students that do come in to the master's program from the bachelor's program. So if you're not quite ready yet to start thinking about a master's, that's okay. We'll start with the bachelor's, but um, you can definitely consider a graduate degree, um, you know, in the future. So let's see here. We're going to, I'm going to start sharing my screen again and we're going to, oh, I'm um, gonna go on to the next degree program in the College of Information, which is data science. I think this is our youngest bachelor's degree program. It's most recent. It started, I believe in fall 2019. Um, and it's, it's grown uh, in popularity for sure. So um, we're gonna talk about some of the degree requirements for data science. Um, we do have pre-data science courses uh, that students need to take uh, before they get too far into some of their their major courses. So you'll have to take, um, in addition to statistics, which you take as your mathematics core course, you'll need to take pre-calculus, um, right now computer science one and two, and then we have the major courses that you take within your major. Um, and one or two of these would require that you have like some math and computer programming ahead of time. And then you'll choose your professional field area and you'll have room for a small number of electives within the data science major program. But the core are, like I said, pretty much the same as they are for other degree programs here at UNT. Um, you know, you're going to be collecting and analyzing data to make strategic decisions, extracting and organizing information. Um, 
and all of that within the major. And I'm going to invite our data science faculty to start speaking in just a little bit because he is much more eloquent uh, at speaking about data science than I am. Um, but these are some career possibilities. And you can be an information analyst, data scientist, of course, data analyst, um, and, and all of these other different areas that you could go into with a data science degree. So um, Dr. Ding, if you're able to unmute, we would love to hear from you and, uh, and share some about data science. Okay, um, good morning. Uh, let me change that. Oh, I don't know how to change the background. It seems weird. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I just give a very careful because uh, Rachel already talked about most of the stuff. And, uh, so data science, as you know, now is a most hot uh, area. Um, if you graduate I, uh, with a good grade and uh, a GPA, I, I'm guarantee you again, you can find a really nice job uh, in the FW area. I work with lots of the uh, local uh, corporates and including like uh, Capital M, Parkland Hospital, American Heart Association and, uh, <clears throat> and JP Morgan, CT, Bank of America and uh, uh, UT Southwestern. Um, so also local government. And um, um, so the, the, all of this um, uh, also the Arizona, uh, so banking, all of this uh, uh, cooperation now uh, uh, already uh, have our student either doing uh, internship or already hire our student as um, uh, full-time employee. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm teaching a capstone project for the graduate student. Um, of course, we don't have a bachelor student graduate yet, but uh, uh, for the master, we have the uh, data science master program as well. We have um, more than 200 um, uh, graduate students now. So. Um, but of course, this is a very a grueling um, major. So if you want to be here and you have to work very hard, right? You have to work very hard and uh, have very good background. That's three uh, knowledge area. It will build a foundation for uh, data science. That is um, mathematics and statistics, of course, right? Because we're using this method uh, to, uh, to mine uh, the value from the data that it must be uh, have the, um, have to be rigorously uh, analyzed and have the mass foundation, not just guess, right? So you have to have the uh, confidence, okay? Confidence uh, to 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 uh, to be sure the the result can be uh, um, can be um, believed, can be used. So the second is about computing. So very important, actually. You need a programming um, skill. Of course, you are not actually uh, have a same programming skill as computer science graduate, but you have to know basic data structure and algorithm and can write uh, agri uh, write program to analyze the data, okay, to do machine learning, all of these uh, tasks. It's very important uh, you have the programming skill. But fortunately, nowadays, programming, especially for high-level programming for data analysis, is not very difficult, okay? I believe you can do it if you really work hard. Third part actually is uh, machine learning and the statistical analysis, machine learning, right, including the traditional machine learning and the deep learning, as well as, as uh, uh, nowadays we talk about computational linguistic to deal with uh, this type of uh, unstructured text data. So this is three foundation are extremely important for uh, the data science. If you uh, master all of these three uh, areas, because I know some students maybe have minor in other majors, you probably looking for say, okay, I have minor in computer science or minor in statistical, minor in linguistic, that will be very good choice. Okay, very good choice. And uh, also you might have the um, um, minor in information science, of course. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, if you uh, uh, be here and uh, I'm here and uh, I try my best to help and uh, I hope you we enjoy the, the, the years with, with us, with UNT, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dean. We will have a time for questions uh, at the end. So if you have questions, I think you can ask them in the question and answer section. And then um, the faculty will also have some time to address those. So, um, but we're gonna move on to um, our next and final degree program within the College of Information, which is the Bachelor's of Applied Science in Learning Technologies. 
Um, this degree allows for specializations from maybe a community college if you've taken some IT or gaming courses or some courses that would be considered STEM, um, then they would be an, an excellent fit for this degree, especially if they're um, towards an, an associates of applied science, uh, because those credits can really only be applied to a few special types of bachelor's degree programs here at UNT, um, a bachelor's of applied arts and sciences or a bachelor's of applied science like this, this degree here. So um, we would love to use those credits if, if you should have them completed from a community college or maybe from the military. Um, so we have the same 42 hours of university core, English, math, science, government history, social and behavioral science, and different areas. Um, you can find these core courses listed in the academic catalog if you're curious to know what courses specifically um, fulfill these requirements. Um, you, can, you can check catalog.unt.edu and look for the university core curriculum and you'll be able to see the core um, from that site. Uh, but uh, that's the core side. And then we have the courses within the major where you take 21 hours of LTEP coursework um, or one info course as an option. So that's seven courses within the department you'll complete. And you can definitely take more than seven LTEP courses um, towards like the technical and professional development area. Uh, you'd be welcome to take additional LTEP courses um, if you would like to. Uh, the main focus or the main um, point of this degree is that you need at least 60 hours of STEM coursework because this is a STEM major. Um, your electives would also hopefully be STEM as long as we're getting to that 60 hours of STEM that's required for this degree program. Let's see here, some career possibilities, um, instructional designer, web designer, maybe learning game designer, systems analyst, um, and this program also has a master's degree that can follow it up if you should decide you want to, to further your education. You could also consider the master's uh, program. But now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ennis Cole. Um, she is the undergrad faculty advisor for Learning Technologies, and I'd really like to hear more about it from her, and I'm sure you would too. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. I hope you and your family are doing well. I am Dr. Ennis Cole, and I am a professor in the Department of Learning Technologies. And I'd like to share with you four things, uh, basically what learning technologies is all about, the work that learning technologists do, an example of learning technologies, and some possible career areas. Rachel just summarized that very nicely, so I'm going to steal a little of your thunder, Rachel. Learning technologies is an interdisciplinary field and it has its roots in several different areas, including education, information, communication, and certainly the technology. Professionals in learning technology study the impact of different forms of technology on learners and their learning. So our ultimate goal is to build learning environments that are motivating and engaging and helpful and effective at helping people perform different tasks. To do this, we conduct research on pedagogy, instructional design, communication channels, and different technologies like mobile tools, gamification, e-learning, chatbots, virtual environments, just to name a few. Learning technologists have to be aware of the learner's characteristics. We are concerned about things like cognitive load, memory, attention, and visual perception. Equally important to us are the theories of learning, curriculum design, and the affordances of different technology tools. We take all of these into consideration and use them to improve a person's performance, skill, and knowledge. So as an example, if you have a smartphone, doesn't matter what brand, and you've used it to figure out how something works or investigate options or finish an assignment or compare products, you have directly benefited from the work of professionals in learning technologies who've asked many questions through their research, like what's the impact of mobile technologies on learning? What are learner preferences in the layout and design of content presented on a mobile phone or through an e-management? LMS, what graphics should be selected. All of these kinds of questions are things that concern us. 
and industries and businesses are looking for people who can help them to lead in the area of web-based development and online course management and delivery. So this degree is very, very important for helping people to develop the competencies that they need in order to lead in industry areas um, to actually build tools and games and instructional systems. The program helps its graduates develop critical thinking skills, problem solving competencies for selecting, using, and implementing all kinds of technology tools in applied science, technology, engineering, mathematics, basically STEM fields. The BAS prepares students for a host of different careers, uh, instructional design specialists, multimedia specialists, organizational design and development, and web-based development. If you'd like more information, feel free to contact us. We have a very simple email address, bas at unt.edu. Again, that's bas at unt.edu. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ennis Cole. Thanks for being here and thank you for sharing more about learning technologies. This is definitely a very, um, I, I think, relevant field uh, right now um, with where we are in our, our culture. Um, but yes, thank you so much. Thank and, you, Rachel. Yes, and uh, Sarah is here now. And so I wanted to give her a little chance to introduce herself. Um, she had some, some issues of becoming a panelist. So now she is here and she is now a panelist with us. She's joined the panel. And um, Sarah, could you please say hello to the, the participants? Hi, I'm Sarah Key. I'm so glad to see you through this Zoom meeting that I academic advisor in College of Information for five years, I guess. And we are the, the Blanca and me are the academic advisor. We will go to help you from your, you know, once you come to UNT from like a first semester, the orientation for the graduation we are helping you for fall so you have any question like you know we are, you can you, you might have a lot of questions after this session so over simply email us at ci-advising at unt.edu and blanca and i will share the email then we one of us gonna email you right away okay perfect Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad we were able to see your beautiful face this morning. Um, and so we're going to go forward. We just have a little bit left, and I, I saw the 10-minute reminder. So we have about 10 more minutes left with you. Um, I think we can fit everything into that time frame and still allow for some questions. So um, my next slide is about scholarships. Many students wonder about how they're going to fund their college experience. So I wanted to let you know that there are scholarships at pretty much every level, um, at the university level, college level, and department level uh, to, to look into those scholarships and to definitely apply for them. The one thing about free money is that you have to apply early. So March 1st is the deadline to apply for scholarships in the upcoming academic year. So for fall 2021 to spring 2022, you need to make sure that you're meeting that deadline. It's the deadline for most scholarships that I'm familiar with um, is that March 1st deadline. And so you can find these scholarships through financial aid, through our college website, and then through the individual department websites that has your major. So you don't have to be able to click this link right now, um, but if you'd like for this information, you can email us at that address that Sarah gave, CI dash advising at unt.edu and we can connect you to the scholarship office or the resources that you're looking for um, but i just wanted to let you know that you can be looking into funding opportunities with a variety of departments and even outside of unt there are companies that also offer scholarships so definitely working with the unt financial aid and scholarship office to identify those those opportunities is, is important Okay, and then again, here's our email address and we are responding to emails um, all day, every day, uh, except for the weekends. I have to say we do take time off um, so uh, over the weekends, but Monday through Friday, we will get back to you. Um, if you've been admitted to UNT, we really would like to have your UNT student ID number included in your email so we can pull you up and um, know who you are and find out um, more about you you know, where you are in your educational experience here. So um, if you contact us, please give us as much information within that email as possible so we can get, um, 
you know, a good quality answer back to you. Okay, and now we can open it up for questions. So I'm not sure, I haven't taken a look yet to see if there are any questions that we can address. Um, but uh, that's that's where we are. Drew Ann, do you, do you know, are there any questions from students that need to be addressed? Um, so it looks like the uh, questions we had in the Q&A were answered um, by someone um, chatting or. Okay, someone was active. Yeah. Okay, cool. I have questions if I might. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Winston. I'm also one of the admissions counselors here. And I would like to invite our faculty members. Um, I know like my own undergraduate experience, um, I was absolutely astonished when a professor took an interest in me um, based on like just my, well, that's, that's the answer. Uh, and a professor took an interest in me and even as a, as a, uh, as a senior uh, at UNT, uh, two semesters out from graduation, he was like, you can totally handle it. Why don't you come on into my graduate level course? So my question is, um, what do y'all as faculty members look for in undergraduate students that make you want to, you know, I, or that make you more willing to write them a letter of recommendation or perhaps uh, grant them access to a graduate course or participate in your research. So like, what are the, what are the things y'all look for in like an outstanding undergraduate student? Any takers? I'll, I'll start as, because I mentor a, a lot of undergraduate students and I work with so many undergrads and, uh, and partner them with our graduate students, which gives them great access to what it's like to be a graduate student and conduct research. But to answer your question, I look for students who take initiative, uh, who get interested in different topics in linguistics and want to pursue those topics on their own or with me as their mentor or with a graduate student as their mentor. I look for students who apply for the undergraduate research fellowship, which I tell them about every time, every year that it comes up. Um, and so, so I would say initiative, research, uh, a curiosity in the field, um, and then a desire to pursue it with some discipline. Uh, that's, and I, and I see amazing students. So every semester I have students that fit that category. And since we have grad track, which allows students to, uh, in their senior year, take classes and get graduate level credit. Um, and I work in that, I really push those talented uh, students who, who take initiative to, to do that. So that's a great question. Thank you for that. I'd like to add to that. Um, I think for, for me, it's follow up, um, hard work, curiosity, and a passion for the area and a dedication to it. feel motivated and also has already had some foundation uh, in the area she likes to continue to explore. That means it will be more easier to uh, collaborate between the mentor and the, the particular student. And uh, also uh, have a good time management. Uh, so I like to say the student detail oriented and uh, uh, you know have a solid foundation already. Thank you. I don't know if we have any other questions, but um, yeah, I think I think we're pretty good. I don't know. Oh, to adding one more thing, if one of you students taking courses at the community college and plan to transfer to UNT, you can simply email us your transcript and Blanca and I, we will do an official degree plan. So you exactly know which courses will be applied to your degree. Yes. Yes. Please check with us <laughs> before you take it. We would love to take a look at what you're planning to do. <laughs> yeah. If you're not sure what major you're going to do at UNT and you are taking courses at the community college, you're not sure they will be transferred. You can contact us ahead and we will help you out. 
we will double check that course will be transferred to your major or not. Yes. And I'm gonna add to what Sarah just said. All courses that you take at the community college are transferable, but not all of them are applicable to the degree. So that's uh, the main reason why we want you to check with us. Um, because your courses will transfer, but not all of them will be applied to the major that you're uh, interested in. Awesome. So I think with that, I think we are going to wrap things up. Thank you so much uh, for y'all attending this session. I um, super appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to the College of Information. If you have any questions about admissions, please reach out to us. Y'all have a wonderful Saturday, um, wonderful day, all of that. Um, and yeah, go mean green. Thanks, y'all. Mm -hmm.